Uh, welcome everyone. We have with us Utkash Bharadwaj, uh, who has been working with Deloitte since the last uh, two and a half, three years. Uh, he's a CAT scorer, ninety eight point six percent in CAT twenty twenty one, and a GMAT scorer of seven seventy, uh, which is the top one percent type globally. Uh, he's a B Tech undergrad from Kalinga Institute of Information Technology in the in computer science field. So welcome, Utkash. Glad to have you today. Thanks, Akash. Thanks, Darya. Thanks, Aditya. Thanks for having me. So, let's start with the questions we have, and uh, understand your preparation strategy for GMAT seven seventy. Uh, first question we have from our side is: um, uh, So, what exactly uh, is the GMAT exam structure and the marking scheme? Sure, Akash. So, the thing is, GMAT has four sections. Uh, Basically, two of them are part of the eight hundred score component, that is the Q part and the V part. So Q is quantitative ability. It has two subsections. One is data sufficiency and one is the problem solving skills. And verbal has three sections: uh, critical reasoning, sentence correction, and reading comprehension. So a few of the questions from these components are going to be experimental. That means you are not going to be judged on them. But you would not know which of them are experimental, so you'll have to attempt it anyway. Apart from that, we have two more sections known as integrated reasoning and and uh, AWA, which are not a part of the 800 score, but are scored. So yeah, that's the entire component of the GMAT. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all about it. Okay, and uh, so coming to you now, when did you start uh, preparing for your exam, <clears throat> and when did you take the exam? And was this your first attempt, or like have you taken any attempt before as well? So this is my second attempt. Uh, in my first attempt, I was able to score a seven twenty, which I thought was sufficient enough to get me into ISB, ISBs of the world, and SPJMR. But unfortunately, I couldn't make it, so I uh, retook GMAT, and I was able to improve my score from seven twenty to seven seventy. So I started preparing for GMAT. It was a subsequent preparation. I was preparing for CAT as well, which has really helped me improve my Q abilities. So data sufficiency, critical reasoning, and sentence correction were different from the CAT pattern. So that's why I had to prepare for them. So July 2020 uh, is when I started preparing for my GMAT for my first attempt, and I took my GMAT in December of that year. So that was my first attempt, and then I was applying to. ISB EEO, I got rejected there. Then I again applied to the ISB round one this year. I was waitlisted there. So then I decided I should take uh, another hit to GMAT. So this attempt took me two months. My previous attempt took me three, three and a half months for my entire preparation. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, in the span of one, one and a half year, did you also enroll in any coaching classes, or like were you on your own through this while? Okay, so for my so I was preparing for CAT and I was enrolled in one of the coaching centers there, Elite Grid. It's a it started from Facebook and now it has a great reach all over. Elite Grid was my CAT coaching, and then for the other sections that I have mentioned, like uh, sentence correction and critical reasoning and for data sufficiency, for for uh, gapping that uh, for clearing that gap, I joined Crack Verbal. I was const uh, I was constantly doing the weekend classes and yeah that that was for my first attempt for my second attempt I didn't join any coaching as such but I yeah I was taking mocks from uh, Kaplan uh, from Veritas and from the official mocks. Okay. Uh, so picking up from where Akash left, so what were the level of questions in the coaching classes as compared to the actual exam that you gave? So coaching classes generally have uh, one level up from the actual examination, so that we can prepare for the actual grind. Okay. And most of the questions were off the mark. Some of them were above the mark. So yeah, they were providing us a mix of all the questions. Plus, my CAT preparation has helped me tremendously because generally CAT quant is difficult as compared to the GMAT quant. So I did not have to worry a lot about the GMAT quant. But the reading comprehension level was almost similar. Generally, RCs in CAT are a bit verbose. They have, I mean, more words in them. GMAT RC is more difficult to read and understand, but they have lesser words. Okay. So questions were mostly at par or above par, not below par. Okay. 
so how many mocks did you give on your own and like how many months prior to the exam you started giving them sure i took my first mock as a diagnostic mock and i really recommend this to everyone who has been planning for gmat gre or even cat okay, okay you need to have you need to take a diagnostic mock to know where you stand so i took my first diagnostic mock that was the free mock from uh, mba.com and i was able to score a 650 from them uh, so i knew uh, what all things that i had to work on so from that i started taking more official mocks so one and two official mocks are free at mba.com and 2 to 6 3 to 6 is what you have to buy so uh, post two to and a half months of preparation for gmat i started taking my uh, so from october onwards from october to november i started taking my official mocks and the mocks that are purchased from kaplan and veritas oh. so yeah two to and a half months of entire preparation is good enough to start taking mocks but yeah first diagnostic mock is really important okay and just could you specify okay. your performance in the mocks that you gave Sure, sure. So I have mentioned that my first mock score was six fifty. Then I started jumping from six eighty. Six eighty was my second performance. Then uh, I constantly started scoring more than seven hundred. So seven thirty is what I remember I have scored uh, in my first. Uh, I mean, when I was preparing for my first attempt, and I ended up getting a seven twenty. Post that, I started. I mean, I took few more mocks. I have hit seven fifty as well in some of the mocks. Okay. But I was. I never. I was not expecting to be. Scoring a seven seventy, so seven fifty was a realistic target for me, but I ended up getting a seven seventy. So yeah, that's my performance in the mocks. Okay. Uh, so uh, like continuing on the preparation part. Uh, so which books did you refer to for your preparation in GMAT? And if you could please mention the author or the publication, that would be good. Sure, sure. So I mean, the only source for GMAT preparation is the official guide. You should not trust any of the other books or authors that are there. I mean, it has been recommended by all the faculties and everyone who has been taking the GMAT examination. The OG books are the bible for uh, the GMAT preparation, and the verbal review and quant review by MBA.com itself. So, if you need to practice anything uh, for GMAT, I would only recommend the official guidebook and the verbal review and the quant review. Plus, you can have some of the questions from GMAT Club, but yeah, it should be from uh, the trusted sources itself. You should not go anywhere and practice for GMAT. Because a lot of questions are being deviated; they are either really hard or really easy from the exam pattern. Okay. So that should be a thing that we should remember. Oh, great! Got it. Uh, so Utkarsh, what was your study plan? Uh, in the sense that how many hours did you give uh, to various subjects every week? Okay. Sure. So I was preparing for CAT as well. So uh, weekdays used to be mostly for CAT. Because I had a coaching every day from Monday to Friday uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, sorry, at 10 p.m. And uh, weekends were dedicated specifically for GMAT. I used to have, I mean, eight-hour sessions, sometimes four, six-hour sessions on weekends. So uh, I used to divide my time from I like like 50% time for the verbal section and 50% time for the GMAT uh, for the G, sorry, I'm really sorry for the quant section. Okay. So yeah, so four hours for uh, verbal and four hours for uh, quant is what I used to give in the weekends, and that that continued for two two and a half months. Coming to your exam, actual exam, uh, could you mention some exam taking tips or strategies? Sure, sure, sure. So one of the most important uh, thing is to make sure. I mean, get your head straight when you want to take the examination. So. Initially, I was planning to take my GMAT examination in September itself, but, but then I started panicking and I wasn't sure that I should take my GMAT at that time. So I actually rescheduled my examination twice. I settled for December date before applying to, uh, I mean, dates in September and uh, October. So it's very important to understand when you're ready and uh, go for the examination as soon as you feel you're ready. That's one of the tips that I want to suggest. Apart from that, you don't have to fret too much for GMAT. you will just have to you just have to practice on the right sources uh, the right uh, the right examinations the right the mock test and uh, og is really important i actually solved og three times completely because before jumping to the actual examination so yeah solving og is uh, really important solving uh, mocks are really important and getting your head straight for the examination whenever you feel you are ready just go for the examination do not procrastinate or delay your examinations got it got it uh with this we come to the last question uh, uh, in the conversation 
uh, what according to you should aspirants do one day before the exam so what actually has helped me in my second attempt is i was really chill i mean i was not fretting too much i was not wondering what i'll be doing in my second attempt because i had faced all the anxiety and the problems that come with it so be very very relaxed in your attempts uh, so there are additional breaks in the examination that i actually forgot to mention so there are additional 8 minute breaks in all between all the sections make sure you complete the entire examination in one go do not take that break once you are done with the entire examination you can take break and relax and whatever you want to do but make sure you when you sit for the examination you take it on a one go so that you have your full concentration on the examination and try to relax as much as you can in your before your examination at time that is something that i would want to suggest to everyone who is taking gmat examination that's great yeah perfect uh i think with this we've come to the end of the video uh so uh thank you so much utkarsh uh your uh, your you are an inspiration for all the people applying wishing to asp aspiring for an mba uh thank you so much our viewers will learn a lot from your experiences thank you so much thank it was you. great to be here hey folks thank you for watching our video please like and share this video and subscribe to our youtube channel Also guys please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below and see you soon with our next video